Hey, great to see you. You do realize the only reason I'm here is for you? <laughs> I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot, and this is April 11th. It is Tuesday. Now, we're going to be taking a look at some hot OTC and penny stocks. Now, what makes these stocks hot? Because they ran today? No. No, these are actually stocks that have potential. That means they have not run yet. They're normally under the radar. And unlike most people, I don't go looking for potential in the news. I actually ignore the news initially. I go looking at the charts first, and I don't even know what chart I'm looking at. I bring up a scan and I just start going through the charts one after another, looking at them, looking for a breakout or a lot of volume coming in. If I find a hot chart, then I go looking at the news. Look at the filings, old and new, looking for anything that can push that chart. Well, I've got a few of those to share with you today, and I found my catalyst. And you know where I found them? All right here at the otcmarkets.com website. This is where I initially start all of my research on any stock, whether it be major exchange or the OTC. Because you got to remember, a penny stock can be on any market because it's simply a stock that's under five bucks and they are everywhere. But this site, even though it's set up for the OTC market, does bring in a lot of information for the major exchanges. And in case you didn't know, it's updated every single day by FINRA and the SEC. So you're getting that current information without having to sort through a lot of old information like we do at Google. All right, how did our OTC market finish today? Yesterday was one of the worst days I've ever seen, if not the worst. Our dollar volume, oh, thank God, had fallen under a billion. We were at 905 million yesterday. Right now, we're at 1.3. I'm going to give this a refresh and hope for a bump. A little bit, not much. Things are a little better right now than yesterday, but we're right back in the same boat. We're way under $2 billion on our dollar volume, which is where the game begins. Our share volume, again, $10 billion. This is getting us out of bed. And our trades, woohoo, we're over $250,000. It's really not worth the celebration, but you don't want to see it go any lower. We've been stuck at $250,000 for months, and then we fell under it for like the last 45 days, and now we're coming back up. I'll take anything I can get at this point. All right, as I said, I do have stocks to share with you, and I've got them all lined up. So what are we doing on this page? Yep, all set up and ready to go, as I knew it was. First stock we're going to be taking a look at is a penny stock on the NASDAQ. This is Black Box Stocks, ticker BLBX. Now, her chart is unique in the fact that we've never looked at one of these charts before. It's not your typical breakout. There's not a lot of volume building up. The fact of the matter is, BLBX went through a reverse split today. It was a small one, one in four. So for every four shares you own, they gave you one share, which made the price go up four times from where it was. And after the reverse split, she did climb some, and then she fell back to a very nice position. But what I like here isn't just her positioning on the chart, but she's got a really small float. Not from the reverse split. That just helped. They eliminated a whole bunch of shares before the reverse split. And they've got some hot news brewing right now. So I think in a few days, once the price settles down and the SMAs catch up to it, that's going to give us time to get a nice entry into this. And I think she's going to take off again. So BLBX, she finished the day at $2.43 with almost 27% gains. So what does BLBX do? Well, as traders and investors, I think we'll appreciate this. Black Box Stocks develops web and mobile-based analytical software tools for stock and option traders of all levels. Our servers are located in close proximity to the New York Stock Exchange, the NASDAQ, and the OTC exchanges and drive our proprietary algorithms at near light speed. Our platform employs predictive technology enhanced by artificial intelligence to find volatility and unusual market activity that can result in the rapid change in the stock's price. They have an easy to use dashboard and this comes with everything you'd want plus they have got a fully interactive chat that connects to social media platforms. They've also got live audio and video features as well so you can share anything any way you want. So what was the company's relative volume today? What? Well, I've seen the chart. I know she was trading yesterday and the day before that and that. So where's the volume? 
So I'm not sure to say if she's up 100%. What would you call that when you go from nothing to 96,000? She's under the radar. I think 96,000 is under the radar, but I got nothing to compare it to. But she does have volume coming in. That's all I can say at this point. Share structure for the company. Well, this is real good. Now, I'm not sure if they've done everything they need to do. This may even get lower. Normally, when there is a reverse split, these all go blank and I can't see anything. Well, that reverse split happened today and I am still seeing a number here. I'm almost thinking that's not right. Now, this is on the NASDAQ, so it better be right. The reason I'm saying that is if they did a one in four, we would be under a million shares outstanding. Oh, I know that sounds juicy, but they've got minimum requirements on the major exchanges. They cannot have less than a million shares in the float. So, hopefully, this is a bottom line number. And I don't know what the float is, especially after everything that's changed. Matter of fact, I can show you over here. They got rid of 687,000 shares, which isn't much, but they got rid of those at the beginning of uh, March. And then they got rid of another 1.1 million on the 20th of March. So I'm presuming we're somewhere near 3.4 million outstanding in our float. Well, it's less than 3.4 million. So no matter how you look at this, from what corner, what position, it is a super duper low float. Financials for black box. All right, let's see what we got going on. Growing every single year. We started here at a little over a half a million, hit one million, three and a half million, six million. You're going millions? How do you get millions there? Because they tell us we got to add three zeros to any of the numbers on the charts we're looking at here. So at the end of 2021, they had six million dollars roughly. Looking at the quarterly, we do have some 2022s here. We've got one, two, three. So we have this one coming out. We need that right now. It's overdue. So what they've got here so far is 1.2, 2.5, 3.7. And what was it last year? 6.1. Ooh, they're going to have to make a huge jump here, I think. Yeah, definitely going to have to have a huge jump. They're going to have to do about two and a half, three million dollars. But that is overdue because when you look over here, there's your NT. 10K. 10K is your annual report, and an NT, you can think of that as an abbreviation for not. So when they file an NT 10K, they're just saying we're not going to be filing our annual report on time. And when they file this, it buys them 15 days. It's the grace period they get. They filed this on the 31st. That's going to give them until the 14th, the 15th. So just a few more days. We are expecting that to come out at any time now. Now jumping back to that news. You saw two pieces of news here where they took shares out all in the same month. And then right here, Black Box Stocks partners with Boosted.ai to enhance artificial intelligence with Black Box Platform. Now I want to share some of this news with you. I've always thought about this, getting artificial intelligence to work with trades. I mean, I know we've got the big companies using them, but what about us? What about the little people? And are they going to charge us $1,000 a month to use the AI? Better be worth it. So they tell us here that Black Box Stocks entered into a partnership with Boosted AI, a leading provider of AI-powered investment solutions to bring cutting-edge investment technology to retail investors. Black Box will leverage the advanced machine learning algorithms from Boosted AI in conjunction with the predictive analytics of the Black Box platform. This combined functionality will incorporate real-time options and stock data, predictive analytics, and machine learning to provide actionable alerts for both day trading and long-term investment strategies. Integrating the cutting-edge technology of Boosted AI into Black Box Platform is a significant step forward in our ongoing mission to provide our users with the best trading information possible. After implementing this initial feature from Boosted AI, we plan to corroborate further using the wealth of proprietary market data we have aggregated over the last four years more changes to come. And you got to remember with AI, it's not like a computer program. You use a computer program, it's pretty much the same today as it is a year from now. But with AI, they're accumulating data 
every single day, all that data, and they're adding it, and they're growing exponentially. They're getting smarter and smarter and smarter. So it may not be a good day trader the first week it's on the market, but a year from now, it might make you rich. So that's what's going on. They've got hot news. They've got a low float. They've just done a reverse split and the price is attractive now. And the price has fallen on the charts to an opportune place as far as I'm concerned. Let me show you. If Jack's looking for his beanstalk, I know exactly where it is. This is BLBX, black box stocks. And we're gonna be doing all of our charting on Thinkorswim. This is a free trading platform you get just by signing up with TD Ameritrade. So we've got this opened up to a six month, four hour view. Our low bubble starts at 26 cents at the beginning of January. At the end of January, we finally got over that 200 with a burst of volume, came back down to the 200, another burst of volume, pushed away up, came back down to that 200. And then today she blasted off, but this isn't trading volume. That's the reverse split right there. She started down here at 83 cents and went up to $3.27. Continued rising through the day, hitting a high of $3.51 before she fell back and closed at $2.43. Now, if you look, you can see the volume has been growing prior to that reverse split, and then it's fallen, which tells us there is relative volume here. This has been trading every day beforehand, so why the OTC market didn't show us anything, I don't know, but it's there. Our uh, oscillators, we're not even going to talk about them, folks. They're not taking into consideration this is not trading activity. It's a reverse split. They're telling us the market is on fire right now, that investors are all over this, and that's really not the case. Take a look at that 20-day, one-hour view. Super duper flat running through here until, what, three days ago? She actually got up over that 200-day SMA. And she got some volume coming in and then she fell right back down to that 200 day SMA and then we had our reverse split. So she's fallen back here, landed squarely on her nine day SMA. That is beautiful. What I'm concerned with is did she keep more than 50% of that run? So I'm grabbing my Fibonacci. I'm gonna poke it down here at the bottom and poke it at the top. And then I am looking for the one dead center, the 50% mark. And that one is right there. Now, the Fibonacci is really good because this gives you supports and resistances you can trade on. These are legitimate. Even though you didn't connect them to any price points in the past, you can absolutely use these. Now, I'm going to take this down so we can just see that one line. There's our 50%, halfway up, halfway down, whichever way you want to think about it. I don't want to see this price fall below that 50% mark. If it comes underneath, there's a very strong likelihood that it's going to keep falling until it hits the next strongest SMA, if it even stops there. Well, we're above it. We're way up here, so I'm quite happy with where she is sitting right now. Again, with our oscillators, I really don't want to count on any of those because I know what's going on here. Remember I said we're probably going to have to wait a few days for this? You see where all the SMAs are? They're way down here. Well, there's only two things that can happen to close this gap up. That is too big of a gap. The price either has to fall all the way back down here, or it's gotta go sideways for a while and wait for these SMAs to catch up to it. And that's what I think is gonna happen by landing square on top of this nine day SMA. Looking at that five day, five minute. Woo, all right. See our SMAs? We got three of them right now. The 20, the 50, and the 9 have all come up and caught up. Look at those bends. Incredible. And look at the activity after market. She's actually jumped up to $2.61, so she's gone up $0.18 cents since her close. Still a big spread on that 200, so I would anticipate her to still go sideways. Maybe a little bit of climbing, but I think she's not going to do much until that 200 gets close. Our technicals, these you could probably count on, and everything looks like recovery. We got our PPO, percentage price oscillator. It's a lot like the MACD. You want to get that blue line on the other line, and you read them the same. MACD uses the whole price, percentage price oscillator, right? Uses a percentage of the price. So both of these are coming up right now. Our RSI is at 56, it's over 55, which is really as, you know, that's as low as you really wanna go on that. So we're watching BLBX. She's got a super duper small float, so it's not gonna take much to get this thing to run. Think of that. She's got 
let's say 3.5 million. I don't know what the float is, but that's her outstanding. Well, if she sells 10 million shares, she's gonna have to sell every single share three times over. That's supply and demand. When there's not enough shares to sell to the people who want them, the price starts rising. So we could see a run on this. It is very possible. She's got hot news. She's in the trading market. That's the only downside I see is that her product works with the market and the market is slow right now. But outside of that, I think BLBX has a hot chance of making us some money. The next penny stock I got up for your consideration is Renewable Innovations, ticker REII. Now she's got a sweet chart. Price is coming up right up underneath that 200 and it's breaking through right now. She's had lots of news this year, including some hot news today. And on top of all of that, she's got a low float. So REII, Ray. Ray finished today at 91 cents, but she did drop a little over 8% today. On the middle tier of the OTC, the QB, we like to refer to this as the better tier. It's better than the pink because they have to audit their financials. They got to get a CPA to do the accounting. So this just makes them more trustworthy, more transparent. And they've got those two green ticks we're always talking about. So they look healthy. They look good. So what does Renewable Innovations do? Well, their business description here tells us that they are accelerating the growth and the opportunities within the renewable economy. Their team of industry leaders brings extensive experience and invaluable connections across the renewable hydrogen and alternative energy sectors. Now, the company did have news today. So how did that affect their relative volume? Well, she got about 500% increase, jumping from about 12,000 shares to 61,000 shares. Now, those aren't big numbers. I mean, that's a big increase, 500%, but we're definitely under the radar still. Share structure for REII. I told you, we have a low float here. The outstanding shares is only 6.1. They tell us the float is 1.5. I was curious, ran to Google, only found two numbers. They both said 4.4. So it could be 4.4, but whatever it is, it's under 6.1. It's under 10 million. So it is a legitimate low float. That's two we've had today. Financials for REII. Well, this is where I started questioning if we should look at this stock. There was no money here. $46,000 at the end of 2022. And I was hoping to see something better on the quarterly. No, nothing better. But I do look at the filings, I look at the financials, I look at the press releases before I give up. And when I jumped over to a press release, this is what I found. Money, this came out March 10th. Renewable Innovations reports full year 2022 year-end financials, including revenue and growth of 837%. Well, we didn't see any numbers that jumped like that. So this is what we needed to see. And here's the bulleted information for us. Their revenues increased from 370,000 in 2021 to 3.4 million in 2022, 837% increase. This increase was primarily attributable to payments received from two Fortune 500 companies. They increased their assets, jumping from 6.1 million to 9.4 million about a 50% increase on their assets and their cash position. That jumped from 357,000 up to 1.2 million. So that went up four times. So they are not just making $46,000. They are making lots of money and it's jumped and increased huge. So what sort of disclosures we got over here? Anything to add to what we're seeing now? Well, there's that financial. So if you want to get all the details, there's lots of them in there. It's a big one. I think there's like 80 pages in that one. And this one here, this is about warrants uh, attached to a deal. And then I actually seen, I believe it was this one here. I didn't get too deep into this, but it looks like they're in the midst of another merger. It says on December 1st, the company is working on a merger with Nest Builder. Nest Builder. So it looks like they got another merger going on or it just happened. So that is part of their most recent filings as well. Now let's jump on over to that news. So our news goes back to December of last year. Now I'm not going to jump into these news presses. I am going to read the one that came out today, but I want you to see the headlines. They're making a lot of deals talking about lots of money coming in. 
Renewable innovations to support major electric vehicle taxi company with hydrogen clean power. Then here in January, the company continues to receive multi-million dollar orders for alternative energy products. Then halfway through February, the company expands its global reach with new European joint venture targeting significant revenue opportunities. Then at the end of February, the company is engineering a collaboration to prepare emergency generators for New Zealand using hydrogen. Then they've got other potential revenue streams that they discuss in this one. There's a lot of information to do due diligence on here, folks. And then that news press that came out today, and I do want to jump into this one. So this came out today, April 11th. Renewable Innovations has signed an agreement for a creation of a joint venture with MENA Holdings to establish an assembly facility in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia to build hydrogen fuel cell products for distribution in the Middle East and North Africa. MENA has expressed that there is significant interest in hydrogen in the Middle East with substantial funding available for the market. You know they can get money from Saudi Arabia if they need it. The MENA Group has over 15 years of experience doing business in Saudi Arabia. The former governor for the state of Utah, Gary Herbert, a partner of the MENA Holdings, recently visited the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia as a guest of the current Saudi ambassador to the United States. Under the terms of the joint venture agreement, Governor Herbert will serve as an advisor to Renewable Innovations. Abdul Rahman Anasiri, a partner of MENA Holdings, is a Saudi national who will play a strategic role in funding the joint venture. Assembling hydrogen fuel cell products in Saudi Arabia will be a huge advantage in Saudi and regional markets. So they've got themselves a market over there right now. They've got a market that they're working on in New Zealand. They're in Africa. You saw all the deals. They got lots and lots going on. And they're not just making thousands of dollars. They're talking millions of dollars. And with all these deals coming behind each other so quickly, it is literally going to be millions of dollars. And that's what gets a stock price to start moving. Moving. And I think the stock price is at a good place on the chart. Boy, I was getting tongue-tied there. Let's go take a look at that chart. This is REII, Renewable Innovations. Now, this is a six-month, four-hour chart, but it's not covering six months. This ticker just came on the market January 3rd. Came on at 80 cents. Next day, it hit a high of $2.44. That was an easy 300% gains if you sold at the top. It was short-lived. Came all the way back down. Over the next couple of days, she climbed, hitting another high of about two bucks. But she seems to spend her high times right around here at about a buck 65. She fell all the way down to her low of 70 cents at the beginning of March. Bounced off of that low up to her 50-day SMA, which is the strongest SMA we got on the chart. There's no 200 here. And she stuck to that, glued herself to that 50-day SMA until the last few days. Right here, she fell away from it and came down. And after this fall, all this volume came into the picture. Just congested the last three days. Every day has more volume than the day before. Every day, the low is higher than it was the day before. That's what we're looking for. Our oscillators, they have cooled off. That was a big drop from 125 down to 91. But they're not falling. They've all just kind of gone level. The only one falling actually is our RSI going from 58 down to 49. Our 20-day, one-hour view, she has been slowly falling down to that low bubble of 75 cents. She bounced off of that, jumped right over the 50, right over the 200. Once she got on top of the top SMA, she got excited again. That's twice we've seen this huge bar on top of that top SMA. Sad thing is, she did fall all the way back underneath that 200-day SMA. Bounced off of the 50, and right now she is stuck between the 200 and the 50-day SMA. Not a bad place to be, but I like being on top of the 200 better. You can see again, the volume has been growing every single day, with today being the strongest day. Our Osculators are looking sad and bad. All of them are pushing down. That's a strong downdraft right there. So they're all pushing down, except the RSI. Look at that. RSI is actually climbing right now. And you can't see that on the chart. Five day, five minute. 
So it was two days ago she finally decided to come out from underneath the 50-day SMA. Got a little bit of push yesterday, but had the biggest jump today from 94 cents to that buck and a quarter. And she stopped climbing at 10.05. 10.05. The whole rest of the day she was falling. Folks, I've got a habit. When I get into a stock, if it starts running really hard as soon as the bell goes off and it's running like lightning, I normally get out at 9.55, 10 in the morning because the market on a whole takes a break, a pause at 9.55.10. There's normally a little dip and it could continue falling or it could bounce. I really don't know. It is a coin being tossed and before it lands, I just get out. I take my gains. Sometimes I miss more. Many times I come out ahead. So this would have been a perfect time. You've seen it running. It would have been nice to get it up here, but it happened fast. You came back down right here at 10 o'clock. I would have got out and that would have been the right move. Now I can't say that the chart looks hot right now for a run, but she's got a lot going on for her. She's got deals going on. She just made a deal. The news just came out. They've got more money than everybody knows about. They're not just thousands, they're millions, right? And they've got a small float. So the chart's in the right place. We just need to give it a push and we could see a run here. Last penny stock we're looking at comes from the NASDAQ. This is Tingo Group, ticker T-I-O. Now, this used to be ticker M-I-C-T, but the company merged with another company. The two have come together, one big happy family, and back in February, they changed their ticker. Now, her chart is not a breakout chart, not by any means. It is hot. It has been running for four days. The volume is continually growing. The technicals are getting stronger. She's got lots of hot news, and she just dropped a bomb about her financials. So, Teal, she finished the day at $1.38 with just over 6% gains. So, what does Tingo Group do? Well, they are an agri-fintech company. They work with agriculture and technology, and they bring the two together to help farmers. Well, they got lots of different subsidiaries. One of them is Tingo Mobile. This is a leading agri-fintech company operating in Africa. They've got lots of different products, including a device-as-a-service smartphone that comes pre-loaded with a platform on it. Tingo Mobile has recently begun expanding internationally. Last year, they had 9.3 million farmers. This year, they plan on having 32 million farmers. Folks, that's an increase of 300%. That is huge. Another one of their subsidiaries is Tingo Pay. This is a super app in partnership with Visa. They offer a wide range of services, uh, business to consumer, business to business, including payment services, e-wallet, foreign exchange, stuff like that. Another one of their subsidiaries, which is growing very fast right now and they're paying a lot of attention to, is Tingo Foods. This is a food processing business that processes raw foods into finished products such as rice, pasta, and noodles. They've also got a commodity trading platform for the agricultural commodities. This is Tingo DMCC. And last but not least, Tingo Group has an insurance brokerage platform in China. And they've got over 130 offices located in different cities in China. So what was the company's relative volume today? Well, she jumped about five, six hundred percent going from 362,000 to almost 2 million. Share structure for the company. Outstanding shares, we've got 163 million. <laughs> Unrestricted, 5.5 million. You know, I wish that was true, but that is super old, that's 2018. I looked it up, I came up with 154, something like that. It is just under the outstanding share count, so it's not a real low float. Hey, two out of three ain't bad. Taking a look at those financials. Ooh, those are sweet. Jumping every year, going from a half a million to 1.155, 146 million at the end of 2022. I mean, that's great. Who can complain about that, right? When we look at the quarterly, we don't get any more information. They're just breaking down the last year's annual into the quarterlies. But remember, I told you they dropped a bomb on us about their financials, and it came out yesterday in a news press. They tell us here that it was March 31st that they had released their 10K, and it proved that they were worth more than everybody thought. And they give us the numbers right here. Consolidating all the companies together, 
the company's pro forma consolidated revenues for 2022 amount to $1.1 billion. And the pro forma consolidated operating income amounts to $550 million. And I jumped into that financial to check out their assets. They have $1.6 billion in assets. This company's doing a heck of a lot better than they are showing over here. Those disclosures, we've got a few of them over here. We have an 8K, this is about the financials. There is the financial and it is big. There's gotta be 200 pages in this thing. And then we've got an 8K here. This came from the NASDAQ. They were under a dollar for six weeks. Six weeks, see they're on the NASDAQ and uh, major exchanges have what they call a minimum bid price requirement. You can't go under a dollar for too long. Well, I thought too long was six months. Well, I guess they can draw the line wherever they want. Six weeks. So they've got a warning. They have to get their price up over a dollar for 10 consecutive days in the next six months. And in that news press, they say they've already got eight days under their belt. You can see the price is $1.38 right now. On to the news now. All right, this top piece here, we've already read this one basically. This is when they updated us on their financials. It was here in February that they changed their ticker and their name. And then we've got some news here. MICT, before they changed their ticker, through its wholly owned subsidiary, Tingo Foods, signs partnership agreement with EvTech Energy to build zero emission solar energy plant to power food processing facility. Here we got a little bit of information about their Tingo mobile app being used in Africa. And then we've got some more information about this processing facility. And I want to share that with you. This news came out February 9th. MICT to revolutionize Africa's food industry through wholly owned subsidiary Tingo Foods and a commitment to develop a multi-billion dollar food processing facility. Their aim is to be the largest food processing facility in Africa. This would complete Tingo's agricultural food ecosystem from seed to sale. This would make them vertical. They tell us here that Tingo Foods has successfully developed a food processing business with a current capacity to process and wholesale more than $1 billion of food yearly. Through a joint venture, Tingo Foods is also committed to build and operate a state-of-the-art $1.6 billion food processing facility in Nigeria. So far, the company is working with rice, millet, pasta, and noodles. But once they get this second factory up, they say they're going to be working with tea, coffee, chocolate, biscuits, cooking oil, non-dairy milks, carbonated drinks, mineral water, and lots of other things. And that's where they're putting their focus right now, but they've got lots of businesses. And as you can see, they are financially a lot stronger than everybody thinks. And I think it can help this chart keep on running. What I tell you, hot, hot, hot. This is TIO Tingo Group. This is a six month, four hour chart with a lot of volatility. We got our low bubble back here in October of 57 cents and our high either today or yesterday of $1.42. And she's been everywhere, all over the place, lots of volatility. But right here, when the financials were coming out, people got excited, they came out. This is uh, the 31st right there. That's when she started jumping, folks. She was climbing on her nine day SMA. She's hit a high here had a little bit of a pullback and she's fallen back a little bit after market hours, but she's right in the middle of that bar looking good. At Viam, getting stronger every single day. Our 200 day SMA is now turning up and our oscillators are all going to the moon or are on fire. 20 day, one hour view. So she bounced off that low bubble, getting up over that 200, hitting a high here of $1.29, bouncing off the 50, bouncing off the 50. She is running on that nine day. As I said, she pulled back off of that high. And right now she is still sitting on her nine day SMA with a nice even spread on the SMA here. She's looking nice. Our oscillators, well, there is a pullback because of all this right now. They're starting to turn down right now. Looking at our five day five minute. Well, there's that run I was telling you about. She hit this low. She got up over the 200, came back up underneath it, 
really consolidated tight here and then jumped got up over that 15 200 at the same time and did not look back she's been climbing for four days straight here hit this high consolidated took a bounce and she's pulled back and she's right around her 50 just like she was here and down here i keep my eye on her folks the oscillators they say she's falling they say she's going to come down. She could come down to the 200. She could come down lower than that. What do I know? I know that she's got a lot more money than everybody thinks. We're now talking billions of dollars, not millions of dollars. That is head and shoulders over what we thought she was. And she's got things going on. She's making all sorts of business deals over in Africa. She's got lots of subsidiaries. There's just a lot happening here. And the volume has been strong. I wouldn't take my eyes off of TIO. Not right yet. I got to tell you, every day I do this, it is an adventure. I have no clue what stocks I'm going to end up talking to you about. I start my search early in the day, and sometimes I'm even surprised at the end of the day to see I can't talk about a stock I wanted to because the chart took a big dump. But it's interesting nonetheless. And I think doing due diligence, looking at charts first rather than the news works better. But you give it a try and tell me. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.